Hello and welcome to Ajurved Nursing Review Classes. I am Nurse Akwinder and this is your essential NCLEX guide on blood transfusions. In the next few minutes, we will cover the most nose to ace questions on blood transfusions. Let's get started. Let's start with ABO blood type compatibility. It's essential to match donor and recipient blood type correctly. This table illustrates the compatibility. Note that AB is the universal recipient and O is the universal donor. Remember, getting this right is crucial to avoid severe transfusion reactions. Now let's talk about the RH factor, equally important in transfusions. RH positive individuals can receive blood from both RH positive and RH negative donors. However, RH negative individuals should only receive RH negative blood. This compatibility is vital to prevent reactions, especially in Rh-negative recipients who can develop antibodies against Rh-positive blood. Blood transfusion consent is more than a formality. It involves informing the patient about risks and benefits. This slide underscores the importance of respecting patient decisions like in cases of religious beliefs, a frequent NCLEX discussion point. Now let's walk through the general procedure for administering a blood transfusion. Each step is crucial. Start with pre-transfusion checks. It's critical to verify the physician's order for accuracy. Check for any patient allergies and confirm blood type compatibility. Both RNs and RPNs are integral in these initial steps, ensuring everything is correctly in place before the transfusion begins. Next, obtaining informed consent is predominantly the RN's responsibility. This involves a comprehensive discussion with the patient about transfusion, outlining risks, benefits, and alternatives. This informed consent must be documented accurately. Blood compatibility testing, including ABO and RH typing, is crucial. RNs typically perform or supervise this testing, ensuring the blood is safe and compatible for the recipient. This step is vital to prevent adverse transfusion reactions. Preparing for the transfusion is primarily the RN's role. This includes double-checking the blood product, ensuring it is the correct type and hasn't expired, and preparing the IV line with a suitable blood filter. When initiating the transfusion, both RNs and RPNs can be involved. It's crucial to start slowly, closely monitor the patient's vital signs and watch for any signs of adverse reactions, especially in the initial stages. Finally, both RNs and RPNs should be involved in post-transfusion care, monitoring for any delayed reactions, thorough documentation of the entire process from preparation to post-transfusion care is critical nursing responsibility. Understanding and effectively executing these steps are essential for patient safety and are key aspects of the NCLEX exam. Now on to precautions and nursing responsibilities. It's your duty to ensure patient safety. This includes verifying the patient's identity, ensuring the correct blood type is used, preparing the IV access, and being vigilant for any adverse reactions. These steps are essential in preventing transfusion errors. Understanding transfusion reactions and knowing priority nursing actions can be life-saving. Reactions can range from mild allergic responses to severe hemolytic reactions. This information is not just vital for your NCLEX exam, but also crucial in your nursing practice. First up, allergic reactions. These can manifest as rashes, itching, or swelling, particularly around the face and throat. If this occurs, stop the transfusion immediately administer antihistamines and closely observe the patient. If the symptoms resolve, you may be able to cautiously restart the transfusion. Next, we have febrile reactions, characterized by fever, chills, and possibly muscle stiffness. Similar to allergic reactions, you will need to stop the transfusion, administer antipyretics, and monitor the patient's response. Moving to more severe types, the hemolytic reactions. These are serious and present with back pain, dark urine, fever, and jaundice. In such cases, immediately stop the transfusion, maintain the IV line with normal saline, notify the physician, and send both the blood sample and the bag to the lab for testing. For anaphylactic reactions, 
watch out for severe hypertension, respiratory distress, and bronchospasm. These require an immediate stop of the transfusion. Administration of epinephrine and steroids and providing respiratory support while notifying the physician. Lastly, bacterial contamination is a grave concern and presents with high fever, shock, and hypertension. Here, stop the transfusion immediately, maintain the IV line, and administer antibiotics as ordered, and inform the physician. It's also crucial to send the blood and the bag for culture. Each type of reaction requires a specific and prompt response. As a nurse, recognizing these signs and taking the correct action can significantly impact patient outcomes. Keep this chart in mind as you prepare for your NCLEX and in your future nursing career. Now let's quickly cover some complications like circulatory overload, septicemia, iron overload, disease transmission, hypocalcemia, hyperkalemia, and citrotoxicity. Each has distinct signs. Recognizing these signs early and responding effectively is crucial in preventing serious complications. Circulatory overload can occur when blood is infused too quickly. Key signs include cuff and distended neck veins. To manage, slow the infusion rate, adjust the patient's position, and provide oxygen or diuretics as needed. Septicemia, a severe reaction, presents with high fever and potentially shock. It's critical to notify the primary healthcare provider, start supportive therapies like administering IV fluids and antibiotics, and obtain blood cultures promptly. Iron overload, particularly in patients with multiple transfusions, manifests as vomiting or hypertension. Treatment includes administering diphroxamin and monitoring iron levels. Disease transmission risks like hepatitis C highlights the importance of thorough donor screening and safe transfusion practices. Awareness of these risks is crucial for preventing transmission. Electrolyte imbalances like hypocalcemia and hyperkalemia are significant. Hypocalcemia is more likely to occur in massive transfusions or in patients with liver dysfunction as liver is responsible for metabolizing citrate. Key signs are hyperactive reflexes, muscle cramps, positive trousseau, and chivalric signs. Monitor serum levels closely and adjust the transfusion rate as needed to manage these conditions effectively. During massive transfusion, the volume of potassium introduced into the bloodstream can be significant, especially if the blood products are older. Patients with impaired kidney function are particularly at risk because they cannot effectively excrete the excess potassium. Key signs weakness, abdominal cramps, diarrhea, and dysrhythmias. Monitor serum levels closely and adjust the transfusion rate and notify primary healthcare provider. Citrate toxicity, often a result of rapid transfusion, leads to hypocalcemia and hypomagnesemia. Key signs, muscle cramps, altered mental status, positive trousseau, and chivalric signs. Slow or stop the transfusion and replace calcium and magnesium as needed. That concludes our guide on blood transfusions for the NCLEX exam. We have covered the essentials from compatibility to nursing care. Remember, understanding these concepts is key to both passing your NCLEX and excelling in your nursing career. Follow for more informative videos, Azure Nursing Review classes. Bye for now.